I mean, today, uh, you know, some new stuff uh, offensively and defensively just with the personnel uh, that we got. So I think uh, the guys are working to get there. Today wasn't as sharp as you would like, but part of that is new guys in roles, right? And they're playing fast. I will say this, the effort's there. You know, they're trying to give the effort that we want. Just we got to clean up the details uh, and some of the concepts we're running. What's your philosophy on how much new stuff that you might be able to incorporate in the game with? Yeah, it's a tough balance because, you know, we have to be able to force explosives. The only way you force explosives is to do things that are creative. So, I mean, ideally you don't want to add a lot of new stuff because you want to think that your base stuff and some normal things can create explosive plays. But we haven't been explosive, so we're going to have to do some things to try to create those explosive offensively. And defensively, they play so fast that when you have new guys on the field, right in different spots that's a i mean that's like drinking out of a fire hose at times so we just got to clean that up we'll talk about um plus one situations running the football is it tough to go against what you should be doing on, on plays when you are concerned about personnel execution yeah i mean it's uh you just got to adapt you know you got to say you know this is something we've done in the past that's been I mean, I've been blessed. I've been a part of some of the best rushing offenses uh, in the country in my tenure as a coordinator. And you got to be able to adapt to the personnel you have. And everybody, everybody runs the ball a little differently. So I got to adapt a little bit what I've done in the past to the people we've got and, you know, try to get some bad eyes and create some miscommunication on uh, defense. What's your take on where the offensive line is? Obviously, a ton of injuries there. You're basically down to like a second team, and how are they kind of adapting and to what you want, what you need to see? From They're them? battling, man. I mean, Sean's going in there. I mean, Sean's going to start for us this week, and uh, he's he's battling his gut out, guts out, and I'm super proud of how he's competing. Uh, so I'm just proud of how those guys competing. Ben Bray is our is our sixth guy, and he's going to be able to go in there and compete. Uh, we're hoping to get Cade uh, potentially back for game day. But other than that, you know, we've got our we've got our six to seven guys uh, with Ben being involved in that and Kyle Scott being number seven uh, that we got. We, that w those guys are competing, and that's all you can ask. I mean, you can't. What are we gonna do, right? You go out there, you go play a football game, and you're gonna do everything you can to win a football game. And those guys have been doing today in one on ones did a nice job, right? They got excited. Y'all heard it in practice. They've been really sound with their scheme. Uh, Max had a really nice job at right tackle today on a few schemes, so I've been happy with him. Obviously, the one I think it was the Fresno game, they kind of wore down, but is there anything you can do to minimize the wear down factor when you're so low on personnel on that side of the ball? No. no I mean, normally you can, but you, you can't. I mean, you can slow the game down to a point uh, and try to play a, a slower game if you want. But when you do that, you take yourself potentially out of your own comfort zone offensively. And, you know, we have to try to find a rhythm offensively. And when you do that, you're taking yourself out of your own rhythm. Uh, so there's a really, really difficult to manage that when you're, when you're down those guys. But it is what it is. A lot of people have guys around the country hurt. Uh, we have probably a lot more than others, but it is what it is. Caleb McCullough had a good game, um, graded out well. Uh, he'll have an important role this week, and you mentioned Colorado would like to try to do uh, to get matchups on linebackers and safety. So, what do you think about him and that group? Yeah, I mean, this game fits to him because he's an athlete. You know, he's a really, really athletic. He's a 21 guy on the uh, GPS, so he's a super fast linebacker. So, uh, this game kind of suits his style of play. What do you think are some of the keys just against this Colorado attack out front? Yeah, you got to limit the explosives on defense. They're an explosive offense. I think they have they average like is it six or seven plays? No, eight. Sorry, bad math. Seven or eight plays inside the 25 a game. So when you only have seven or eight plays inside the 25 a game, but they're a good offense, what is that telling you? They're scoring from far, right? And they do that because two of their top wideouts have only missed 30 snaps in an entire season. So they're playing. They're in shape and they're playing almost every single snap with their top dudes, and those guys are explosive and they're making explosive plays. So we gotta be able to limit the explosive play on offense, or on, de on de uh, versus their offense on defense, and offensively, we've gotta sustain drives. We gotta be better on third downs. Yes, would I like to be more explosive? Yes, will we try to be more explosive? Yes, 
but sometimes you're you're not that team. So what do you got to do? You got to be uber efficient. So yes, we try to be more explosive. Yes, what we really got to be is way more efficient offensively on third downs. When we get to third and short and medium, we got to a lot of those scenarios last week, third and short to medium, and we didn't convert. And those need to be over 50% conversion rates when you average out third and seven or less. If you're not over 50% in those down distances, uh, you're not going to be a very good offense. You mentioned on Monday how you're looking for more explosives from the offense, but also the defense and the turnovers. What do you think is the key to forcing those turnovers against Colorado? Yeah, I think it's one, I keep saying it, but being familiar with the system allows you to be more comfortable with your eyes. Uh, obviously, being banged up doesn't necessarily help that familiarity because you have different guys playing. Uh, but it really starts with the D-line, chaos up front. Everything starts with chaos. So if you create chaos up front, if you get pressure on the quarterback, you sack the quarterback, try to get strip fumbles, put the quarterback into rest, make him throw bad throws, right? That's what really starts the beginning of turnovers. Uh, and then obviously this quarterback doesn't turn the ball over very much. He does a really good job. He's willing to take sacks, similar to Joe Burrow two years ago. He led the led the NFL in sacks taken the year they went to the, went to the Super Bowl. And uh, I attest, you know, what Shador is doing to that. I mean, when the O-line breaks down, he says one more play in his mind. He takes a sack or extends the play. He doesn't put the ball in jeopardy. And then he goes and, you know, he's a really good quarterback. So he tries to make a play the next down. You're doing pretty good, though, at generating pressures and sacks, but it's not translating to turnovers. How much of that is random or luck, or what do you attribute it to? I think some of it's luck, to be honest. I know that sounds weird. But I mean, some of turnovers are luck. Do guys fumble? Do they not? Do you recover? Do they not? Do they not? And others are, you know, back end, you know, not getting their eyes back to the ball because they're just so concerned about their responsibility and pass coverage. At times, we're a lot of match coverage. So when you play a lot of match, you play a lot of man, eyes aren't on the ball as much. And then when we do play zone, we've had our opportunities. We just haven't capitalized. But um, I just think that's that'll come. Turnovers will come with how we play defense. Uh, it just hasn't come yet. Yeah, it's a true statement. You know, I have a lot of respect for Coach Prime. You know, I said in uh, you know my media the other day, uh, I recruited Shador. He's a phenomenal player, and one of the things I learned in that process was when I recruited Shador, I recruited Shador. I didn't recruit at that time uh, Deion Sanders. Uh, he let me recruit his son, and uh, that, I respected that a lot. The fact that you have this guy who's accomplished everything you could accomplish in football, and he didn't make the process in his son's recruitment about him. So I gave a lot of respect to him to kind of get out of the way. And yes, did he play the father figure in the process and ask the father figure questions? He did, but he let his son go through his process. And I gave, you know, I have a lot of respect for that uh, just with him. And everybody says, oh, Deion Sanders now coach prime. And, you know, it's all about him. It's all about him. But I got to see a side of that where he said, no, it's not. This was about his son's process, and uh, that's why I have a lot of respect for him. And uh, he's done a phenomenal job, Coach Prime has, has as a program. Uh, they're building something there, and uh, he's going to do a great job there, and he already is.